Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in the Edgewater neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. I'm Brother Ron Fox. And while today's Eucharist will be for Corpus Christi, Morning Prayer will be for the second Sunday after Pentecost. For those of you who use the Book of Common Prayer to pray the office, Morning Prayer begins as usual on page 80, followed by the Venite on page 82. Today's Psalms are 9, 10, and 11, beginning on page 593. And the Sunday Canticles are 16 and 21 on pages 92 and 95. It's our tradition and custom here at Church of the Atonement to light a candle, regardless of where we may be, signifying the presence of God in our midst. Mine is already lit. If that's part of your practice, I urge you to do that. And with luck, we'll have a few more people join us in a bit. We'll take just a moment here and begin with morning prayer on the second Sunday after Pentecost. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us for him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Psalms 9, 10, and 11, beginning on page 593. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing to your name, O Most High. When my enemies are driven back, they will stumble and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sit upon your throne, judging right. You have rebuked the ungodly and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. As for the enemy, they are finished in perpetual ruin. Their cities plowed under, the memory of them perished. But the Lord is enthroned forever. He has set up his throne for judgment. It is he who rules the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with equity. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you never forsake those who seek you, O Lord. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim to the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of blood will remember them. He will not forget the cry of the afflicted. Have pity on me, O Lord. See the misery I suffer from those who hate me, O you who lift me up from the gate of death, so that I may tell of all your praises and rejoice in your salvation. In the gates of the city of Zion, the ungodly have fallen into the pit they dug. And in the snare they set is their own foot caught. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are trapped in the works of their own hands. The wicked shall be given over to the grave. And also all the peoples that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. And the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, let not the ungodly have the upper hand. Let them be judged before you. 
Put fear upon them, O Lord. Let the ungodly know they are but mortal. Psalm 10. Why do you stand so far off, O Lord? And hide yourself in time of trouble. The wicked arrogantly persecute the poor. But they are trapped in the schemes they have devised. The wicked boast of their heart's desire. The covetous curse and revile the Lord. The wicked are so proud that they care not for God. Their only thought is, God does not matter. Their ways are devious at all times. Your judgments are far above out of their sight. They defy all their enemies. They say in their heart, I shall not be shaken. No harm shall happen to me ever. Their mouth is full of cursing, deceit, and oppression. Under their tongue are mischief and wrong. They lurk in ambush in public squares and in secret places they murder the innocent. They spy out the helpless. They lie in wait like a lion in a covert. They lie in wait to seize upon the lowly. They seize the lowly and drag them away in their net. The innocent are broken and humbled before them. The helpless fall before their power. They say in their heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face, he will never notice. Rise up, O Lord, lift up your hand, O God. Do not forget the afflicted. Why should the wicked revile God? Why should they say in their heart, you do not care? Surely you behold trouble and misery. You see it and take it into your own hand. The helpless commit themselves to you. For you are the helper of orphans. Break the power of the wicked and evil. Search out their wickedness until you find <coughs> none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The ungodly shall perish from his land. The Lord will hear the desire of the humble. You will strengthen their heart and your ears shall hear. To give justice to the orphan and oppressed. So that mere mortals may strike terror no more. Psalm 11. In the Lord have I taken refuge. How then can you say to me, fly away like a bird to the hilltop? Or see how the wicked bend the bow and fit their arrows to the string. To shoot from ambush at the true of heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the inhabited world. His piercing eye weighs our worth. The Lord weighs the righteous as well as the wicked. But those who delight in violence he abhors. Upon the wicked he shall rain coals of fire and burning sulfur. A scorching wind shall be their lot. Excuse me. For the Lord is righteous. He delights in righteous deeds. And the just shall see his face. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. The words of the teacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What do people gain from all the toil at which they toil under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun goes down and hurries to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south and goes around to the north. Round and round goes the wind, and on its circuits the wind returns. 
All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. To the place where the streams flow, there they continue to flow. All things are wearisome, more than one can express. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, or the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said? See, this is new. It has already been in the ages before us. The people of long ago are not remembered, nor will there be any remembrance of people yet to come, by those who come after them. Here ends the reading. Just give me a moment before we do the canticle. I'll be right back. Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah, on page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was turning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb silent before its shear, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns till he came to Caesarea. Here ends the reading. Canticle 21, the Te Deum, on page 95. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. 
You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, while with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Apostles' Creed on page 96, followed by the Lord's Prayer on page 97, and Suffrages B on page 98. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. O oh God, your never-failing providence sets in order all things both in heaven and earth. Put away from us, we entreat you, all hurtful things, and give us those things which are profitable for us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now come to the prayers on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement and the wider church. You may offer whatever prayer, petitions, and thanksgivings you have, either silently or aloud. If you have a particular prayer request, you can put it in the chat feature of this broadcast. I will do my best to get to it through the course of the prayers, which are about to follow. And our prayers for the week of June 2nd, for the sick, for those in any need or trouble, for all those who have asked for our prayers, Vicki, Brother David Luke, BSG, Rob L, Carol R, Cheryl, Jolene, Beth, Jonathan, Devin, Killian, Dennis, Mark, former President Carter, King Charles, Princess Kate, Arun, all with COVID-19, Kelly, Ryan B, Shelby, Kathy S, Jason, Harry, Tyler, Cecilia, all who mourn, for Ken, Deacon, David, Thomas, and Greg, priests. For an end to war and violence, remembering especially the people of Ukraine, Russia, Iran, the Red Sea, Myanmar, and Yemen. For justice and for an end to violence and division in our neighborhood, city, and nation. For all health care workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K., Larry, Kieran, Lee, Carrie, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily. For all families and children in this city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners. For members of our military services on active duty, especially Celeste and Nate, and for Scott, 
serving as security in Iraq. For Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Amanda and Dave, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry, for our sister parishes of St. Benedict's and St. Matthew's in Chiapas, Mexico, for the birthday of Gloria Brew, the wedding anniversaries of David Hughes and Stacy Horn, Ron Pingle and Jean Hutchhausen, for the diaconal ordination anniversaries of Mother Ann Ryder today and Father Robert Cristobal tomorrow, for the priestly ordination anniversary of Father D. Morris Charles. And we offer our prayers for the departed. For Russell Nemec, William Black, Police Officer Jamal Mitchell, Police Officer Joshua Breeze, and Marion Robinson. And at the anniversaries of their deaths, for Hilda Dreisbach, Betty Muir Weinschel, Elise Montgomery Hartung, Patricia Krause, and Eulalia Wetmore. And we offer this prayer for peace. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kill it, kindle in the hearts of all people the true love of peace, and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who make decisions for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward, till the earth be filled with the knowledge of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The General Thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That concludes morning prayer on this second Sunday after Pentecost. As noted at the onset of this broadcast, for the Eucharist today, we'll be doing Corpus Christi. The 8 o'clock Mass is about to end, and there will be a 9 o'clock and the 11. With a procession around the block, the weather has cleared significantly since yesterday. We should have a pleasant day to process the Blessed Sacrament around the block. Throughout the week, there are plenty of opportunities to worship at Church of the Atonement. On Monday morning, we have a Mass at 7.30 a.m. Tuesday at noon, evening prayer on Tuesday at 5.30, also on Google Meet. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Thursday morning, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Thursday at noon, and Friday morning at 7.30. Saturdays, we do the Rosary at 9.30, followed by the Healing Mass at 10 o'clock. We hope you'll be able to join us later on today. There'll be a potluck after both the 9 and 11. Again, thanks so much for being here with us this morning. Have yourself a great day, everyone. Stay safe out there. God bless.